Good morning. My name is Patrick Allen, and I am an interviewer for the Library of Congress in Washington, their Veteran History Project. And today is June the 27th, and we are at the home of Edgar Woods in Alexandria, Kentucky, to take his interview. Now, the program is uh, conducted through the Hamilton, the Cincinnati Hamilton County Public Library, and the gentleman who is uh, leading that program is uh, Brian Powers. And with us today, helping me with the camera, is uh, our veteran's daughter, uh, Jessica Kemper. So, Mr. Woods, first of all, thank you for doing this interview for me. Thank you, sir. Now, do you go by Edgar or do you go by something else? Buck. Buck? Yep. Got it on my arm. How did you get the nickname Buck? Uh, because I was the first boy after seven girls. So uh, I was named after my father. His name was Buck. All right. Edgar Woods, and I was Edgar Woods Jr. All right. So, uh, where were you born? Uh, I was born in Cincinnati, Ohio. Well, what's your birthday? August 5th, 1946. August 5th? Yes, sir. On the, on the bio form it says August 8th. Should it be 5? It should be 5, yes, sir. Right. And uh, your dad's name was Edgar also? Edgar Lewis Woods Sr., yes, sir. And your mother's name? Was Blobwin Morwith. Spell her last name if you would. Uh, her last name was Thomas. Thomas? Yeah. Okay. Uh, do you know when your mom and dad got married, by any chance? Ooh. <laughs> well, Joan was my oldest sister. Oh, mercy. Uh, I can't remember that far back. Oh, did, uh, what kind of work did your dad do? He was a steeplejack. He would climb uh, the tires over in Cincinnati to change the light bulbs in it. He would uh, paint the flagpole on 4th Street in the Enquirer building, and then he would uh, help uh, tear down s smokestacks. This is all in the Cincinnati area. All right. Um, how about your mom? Uh, you had a number of brothers and you had a number of sisters, but did your mother work outside the home? No. No, she raises us all. <clears throat> where, where was your dad born? Was he born in Cincinnati? No, no Knoxville, Tennessee. And how about your mother? Where was she born? Oh, she was born in, I need help here. Barbara? Illinois. Illinois. Illinois? Yeah. Sister of Illinois, I think. Do you have any recollection of how they happened to meet each other? Well, Granny Thomas was from England. Uh, I, this, this is where it's going to be hard because I can't remember. That's all right. Uh, so you got a relative that was from England? Uh, yeah. Uh, my gran Grandma Thomas was from England, yes. Uh, do you know when she came here from England? Oh. Well, why she came here? 1913. Yep. The year, the year of the flood? 1913 flood? Uh, yeah, she missed the flood. She yeah. Speedy is, is my cousin. Okay. And so his mom and my mom are sisters. All right. Right. So uh, tell me about your family. Uh, you have uh, a lot of sisters. Yes, sir. And can you tell me what your sister's names are? Okay. Start with Joan. She's the oldest. Joan? Joan. And how old is Joan? Oh, well. She's still living? No, no, no. Was she married? Yes. What well, was her married name? Uh, Biden. Biden? B-I-D-E-N? Mm -hmm. B-E-I-T-I-N-G, -E -I, -I, oh, I believe. Oh, Biden? Biden, yes. All right, your next sister? Uh, Sally. She's still with us? Uh, she's one of the very few, yes. Okay, and, and what's her last name? Volters, V-O-L-T-E-R-S. Do you know how old Sally is? Oh, she's in her 90s. 88. 88? Okay, 88. Where does Sally live? Uh, she lives in... Fort Thomas. Fort Thomas. 
with their. Uh, Does she have children? Yes. Yeah. Yes, Susie. She's still here. Mm -hmm. She has three. Who? She has three. There's Susie, Stevie, and... Who's your next sister? Uh, okay. We got Joan, we got Sally. Uh, Pearl. She's still with us? No, she's gone. What was her, was she married? Uh, yes, uh, Burger, B-U-R-G-E-R. Your next sister? Pearl. Joan, Sally, Pearl. Yeah, Florence. Florence? Is Florence still with us? Uh, no, she's gone. Who's she married? Rickers, R-E-C-K-E-R-S. She have children? Uh, yes, uh, Here I go again. Four. Yeah, I know. Four children? Okay. I'm not going to test you okay. with your names. <laughs> well, okay. <laughs> yeah. How about Pearl? Did she have children? Yes, yeah, she had two daughters. I don't think I asked you about Joan. Uh, did she have children? Yeah, she had the uh, same amount as we did. Uh, five. Bidings. She has five. She had five. seven boys and four girls, no? Nope. That's gone. She had five. She had five? Okay. All right, we're down to number five. We got Joan, Sally, Pearl, and Florence. And then, I guess it was me. No. No? Linda. Linda. Linda? Yeah. Now, some Lindas are spelled L-Y-N-D-A or L-I-N-D-A. L -I -N -D -A. And was Linda married? Uh, yeah, but she's dead too. What her last her? name was uh, right. huh? W R I G H T. Right. Yeah. W R I G H T. Right. She have children? Uh, yeah. Um, four. <laughs> four. Four. I'm glad you guys are here. We got we got, we got help from the family, and that's quite all right. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't too many so so, got, stories left up girls. here. Got any more sisters? Uh, okay. What was the last one here? Linda was the yeah. last. Patricia. Patricia. And Patricia with us? Uh, no, she's gone too. She's deceased? Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and was she married? Uh, she was married a couple times. Uh, what, what, huh? was her last, what was her last name when she died? Dorian. Sawyer? No, no Dorian. D O. No, Lions. Oh, Lion. L Y O N S. No, she was a Dorian. That was her first one. Did she have children? Uh. Yeah, she had nine, nine or ten. I'm glad you guys are here. <laughs> I, uh, did you have another sister? Yeah. Yes, Tiny. You had seven sisters? Yeah, seven. Six of them out of the road. Okay. Tiny. Huh? Tiny, tiny Audrey. Her name was Audrey. Audrey? Yeah. Is Audrey with us? Uh, no, she's gone too. What was Audrey? Was, was she married? Uh, yes, McManus. M C M A N I S. Mm -hmm. Three. She had three. And she had three daughters. So Sally's the only one still with us out of the seven girls? Yep. And uh, were you the only boy? Nope, four. You got three brothers? Uh, well, <laughs> I'm the only one left, I think. Well, yeah. Tell me about your boys. Okay. Uh, well, there's me. I was a junior. Edgar Lewis Woods Jr. Right on my ED 214 there. Uh, then came uh, Thomas, Tom. And he's gone. And then there was a set of twins, Ronnie and Donnie. Ronnie and Donnie? Yes. And Ronnie's still with us. And 
which one, Ronald or Donald, is still living? Ronnie is. Ronnie's still living? Yeah, Donald's dead. So there's seven? Eleven children in that family. Eleven. And out of the eleven, uh, there's three of you left. Sally, Ronnie, and yourself. Yeah, Ronnie's got... Now, was there, was there some family health problem? Uh, was there some problem in the family, cancer or anything? That... Yeah, uh, me and Ronnie both have long, long cancer. Vietnam. From Vietnam? Yep. Asian Orange? Yep. That's, uh, I've talked to a lot of fellows from Vietnam and it's uh, kind of hard to believe that the government would uh, no. kill trees and think that they weren't going to hurt you soldiers. Well, uh, so you were born in Cincinnati and were you raised there during uh, grade school and high school? No, no, I, I can't remember. Do you remember where you went to high school? Dayton. Dayton? Yeah, Dayton, Kentucky. Dayton, Kentucky? Yes. That's right on the river? Yes, sir. And was that a high school? Yes, it was. Did you graduate? Yes, I did. And uh, how about your brothers? Did they all graduate? Tom and Ronald and Donald? Uh, Tom, Ronald and Donald Dayton. Um, Ordinarily, I don't ask people how tall they are, but I know that uh, you were a, a special person in Vietnam. How tall? How tall were you when you entered the military? Uh, five foot six, I believe. It should be about the four, DD two fourteen there. Okay. Hi. Uh, I think I just made the height and the weight. I don't see it real quick. How much did you weigh? Uh, I think it was 125, I think. Well, did you enlist or were you drafted? I enlisted. Uh, how but, soon after high school did you enlist? No, I got out of high school in uh, May, I guess, yeah. Uh, and I went in the Marine Corps in August. August 25th of 67 is when you went in? 64. 64? I got out in 67. I got out in 67, okay. Yeah, right. August 26th of 64. Yeah. And uh, when you uh, signed up, did you sign up in Cincinnati or yeah. Covington? Uh, Cincinnati, I think me and Frank both were joined together. Well, to tell me, you mentioned Frank, and we talked a little bit about Frank before. Yeah. Uh, what was Frank's last name? Uh, Adamson? Adamson. And how did you know Frank? We grew up together. In, in Dayton, Kentucky? Yes. Uh, when you say you grew up together, was that grade school and high school? Uh, high school mostly, because he actually was from Ohio, and then his parents moved to Dayton. Okay. And uh, while you were in high school, did you do any work uh, uh, anywhere, a gas station or bowling alley? Or yeah, I, I did. Uh, what did you do? I, I, I pumped gas and I, uh, I worked in a grocery store up on Fish Street, I believe it was in Dayton. I did that after school. Well, for somebody that's going to be seeing this, uh, 20 or 30 years down the road, uh, we don't have any help pumping gas now, but when you were pumping gas, tell the folks uh, what all you did when, if I was driving my car and I pulled in, what did you do? I'll check the oil, check the water and the radiator, and then pump the gas, and I think back then it was 10 cents a gallon. How much, eight cents? 10. 10 cents? 10 or, yeah. A little different today. Yeah. How about washing the windows? Did you offer it? Oh, yeah. Yep. They had a squeegee type thing. That, uh huh. Yep. And uh, what, Check the oil. Did you work for a, a big uh, oil company or no, was it a little mom and pop? 
Well, it was at Boron. Boron? And I'm sure back then it was, uh, I guess they had, they had them all over the place. Ohio and all that. Yeah. yeah. And when did you work there? After school or, or on yeah. weekends? After or? school. And how about summertime? Summertime, I just did like everybody else, did fold around. All right. And you said you worked in a grocery store? Yeah, that was uh, during when I was in school. High school? Yeah, it was after school, yes. What'd you do for the grocery store? Uh, stock shelves, uh, break up cardboard. They had to burn it back then. I don't think we had a crusher. <laughs> Uh, how many how many hours uh, would you work at uh, school? Okay, I got out of school at uh, three and worked till five. I don't know how I can remember all this, and I can't remember what I did yesterday. <laughs> well, <sighs> well, gas was ten cents, and how much were you making an hour back in those days? Twenty-five cents. Uh, well, no, I I think I got free gas. So that'd be about a couple of thirty cents, I guess. <laughs> uh, and I got soft drinks. How about at the store? Would you? How much did you get paid working yeah, at the store? Fifteen, fifteen cents. Fifteen or twenty cents. Fifteen or twenty cents an hour? No. Well, after school, yeah, two hours. Yeah. That's thirty cents. Uh, and a soft drink. Well, you you, you had a, a big family, eleven eleven kids. Yes, sir. Uh, now, did any of, did any of your siblings uh, die in ch in their childhood? Oh, that's gonna be hard. It seems like most of them were married when they. Yeah, passed I, away. I think there was. I'm probably gonna have to go back to my dad's. No, not the I, I I can't remember that far enough. Okay. So when you enlisted, uh, did you choose which branch of the military you wanted to join? Yeah, Marine Corps. Why did you pick the Marine Corps? Because I had a uh, Jim Pyden. He was my oldest sister's husband. He was a Marine. And that was Janice's or Jessica's husband? No, Joan. Joan. Yeah. And I seen Jessica him. right there. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's that's my mistake. So Joan's husband, yeah. he was a marine. He was a marine, and when I seen that, that's why I joined. Where did he serve? Uh, he served stateside. He he wasn't in the war, but they all they all had back then. You had dress blues when you joined. I had a couple of marines tell me they joined because they liked the uniform. Well, I did too. <laughs> he had that on. Yeah. What's that, uh, what's that thing on TV now? Oh, that was the vice president. I want to be like him. Okay. Yeah. So uh, uh, when you signed up, where did, they, where did they send you for your basic training? Oh, hell. <laughs> no. Uh, did you get out of the North San North? Diego, yeah. San Diego? Yes, sir. Yep. How did you get to San Diego? I have train, been, plane, uh, bus? Oh, no, that, that, it was a bus, a Greyhound. Yeah, I remember that. Did Frank go with you? Oh, yeah. Yeah, we went together. It was on the buddy system. So did you guys join together? Yes, we did. Uh, who decided uh, both of you were going to be Marines? Well, Frank had a older buddy, and he had a, already had a set of breast please. I didn't have any back then. And uh, I seen that. Uniform, it just it, it does things for you. Okay. So you went out to California. Yes, sir. Your basic. Yes, sir. And how long was basic? Was that a month uh, or two? No, it was more than a month. Let's see. This this is gonna be another hard one too. Well, take your time. Uh, I think it was four months. What all did you do during basic? What did they teach you besides <laughs> just, drilling? Well, uh, well, at the end. Uh, Back then, they let us have the M1s before we got the M14s, so we would practice uh, cadence and marching and stuff like that. And then when uh, we got to the M14s, 
get us the M14s, and then we learn how to shoot them. What was your rank when you joined? <sighs> PFC. Right. Did you have the same rank when you finished your basic? Uh, no, I got out uh, Lance Corporal, I believe. No, got out basic? No. All right. Uh, after basic, where did okay, you Okay, I was a private in basic, and then after we got out of basic, then I was a PFC. Okay. And then from PFC, I went to Corporal. From Corporal, I went to Sergeant. Where did you go from basic training? Uh, California. Where in California were you? Oh. Remember the base? Yeah, Pendleton. Pendleton? Mm hmm. How long were you at Pendleton? Uh, four weeks. What did you do at Pendleton? Uh, basically, we marching, how to break down, and back then was M1, clean them. We did try to. <laughs> <laughs> tried to what? We were in the barracks, and we were right by the parade field, and Frank and I said, the hell with this ship, and I'm sorry. He said, we were going to try to run away. <laughs> You're going to go AWOL? Yeah, we were, we were going to go AWOL. Didn't work. Well, what stopped you? Huh? What stopped you from going AWOL? The eye. Brown Stark. <laughs> it, it was crazy. Did they, did they stop you on your way out, or did they stop you before you they had a chance tried, to try We to tried to get out of the barracks, and they got us there. How were, how were you dressed? Did you have civilian clothes on? Oh, no, yep, no, no, no. Um, we had they were in our greens, or, or utilities, they called them back then. No, we were the bottom of the ladder. And what was it that uh, you and Frank decided uh, you were going to leave? Why? Because we didn't want to be in any damn war. Well, when guess you, guess what? We joined. When when did you learn that you might go to Vietnam? Oh, that was after. Uh, was that in basic or after basic? Oh, after basic. Was that at Camp Pendleton? Yes, it was. Yep, I was a California Marine. Well, well, let me ask you this. Uh, did you have any training in simulated jungle uh, warfare? Not then, no. No. When did you get any training? Uh, well, Pendleton we did, yes, I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah the, the, the M1, when we... I'm just trying to get all this together right. That's all right. Okay. Uh, the M14, we learned how to break it down because it was a gas operator. Uh, I had to clean the hell out of them. Uh, what, was, what was the name? <clears throat> I was trying to remember the round because we had to break them down. And the magazine was 20 rounds. You have to be able to do that. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah. Uh, daytime and nighttime. Yep. Be prepared. And that was a Boy Scout thing. <laughs> you had to be prepared then. So, <clears throat> from Pendleton, did you go over to Vietnam? Yes. How did you get there? Boat or plane? Yeah, boat. I sailed out of uh, Long Beach, California. And you stop in uh, Okinawa. Okinawa. Yep. How long were you in Okinawa? Just long enough to refuel? Uh, well, we refueled and then we uh, went on a, uh, a different ship, which was the USS George Clymer. And it had uh, what they called the Mike Boats, which was landing craft. And, uh, <laughs> crazy. Landed on the beach. Well, now let's, uh, let, let's, let's go to. Okinawa. How long did it take you to get from Long Beach to Okinawa by ship? Oh shit. I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, I can't remember how long it took. I know that the ship we went through a few storms and 
I was going to ask you how the weather was uh, crossing. Uh, it was pretty bad. In fact, my brother-in-law that was in the Marine Corps, he t told me, he says, get on that ship. He said, you get that top bunk. He said, because if you don't, you get a bottom bunk, <laughs> you're going to get puked on. Oh, uh, yeah. I've yeah. heard that story. And then uh, we also, uh, a lot of us slept up on the deck. And uh, some damn way, got sick too. Damn ways it's black up, splash up on the troop troop ship. Remember how many guys were on the ship with you? Oh, I don't think I can remember that. All. Well, let me ask you this: Were they all Marines? Or yes. Well, no, there was some Navy in there because they did all the cooking and okay. stuff like that. But, but as far as the, other than the crew, it was all Marines? Yes, sir. What, what unit were you in? Uh, okay, I'm just trying to get it through my mind here. Oh, Marine, I see. Trying to remember the unit. Because the Marines had different units. We landed on the beach of July. Okay, well, that's going to be my next question. When you left Okinawa, you went to, straight to Vietnam? Yeah. And where did you, where did your ship uh, land in Vietnam? Chula, on the beach of Chula. It should be right there on, you think. Before we talk about this, let's, let's see if Jessica can, can focus on this. Can you see it? All right, show the people where Chula is. Okay, it's in Vietnam. Uh, Cameron Bay. We were up by the DMZ. Or up by the Bear Saigon. Cameron Bay. Yeah, we were closer to the Miller's Island. Find the name on there and they'll find you not. Let me, let me see if I can take a look at it. If you find the name, then the right true life is right below the name. Okay. Come yeah. Two lives right up in there. Yep, there's two lives and there's the name. Uh, and you, yeah. land, you landed at Chulai. <laughs> we landed at Chulai. And uh, then when Frank got killed and I had to bring his body back, they, they sent me up to the van. So uh, when, you, when you got on shore there in Vietnam, yeah. how was the climate? Hot. Hot. I'm, I'm sorry. Hot. Hotter than hell. Uh, how were you dressed? Did you have some kind of jungle had, fatigues? Yes, we did. That's what we had on. In packs. Was, while you were in Vietnam, before they sent you home with Frank, were you all the time right around Chu Lai? Yes. Yep. The only time they, I was in Da Nang was when they shipped me up there to bring Frank back. Well, when you, when you landed, uh, what was your assignment there in Chu Lai? I was a uh, corporal, okay. and yeah, and then we were all riflemen back then. I mean, so what, what were you, what was your assignment? What were you supposed to do when you got to Chu Lai? Yeah, go into the, the jungles. Well, were were you in a squad? Were you in a company? Were you in a battalion? Or uh, it was a squad. How many men were in your squad? Uh, I'm going to say 12. Where was Frank? Was Back he in your squad? Yeah. 
Was Frank in your squad? Oh, yeah. So did you guys stay together? Until he got killed? Yeah. yeah. Um, <coughs> when you were in Chulai, what uh, accommodations did you have? Uh, we had a, what they called, a, well, they were tents, the cots. Uh, they had wood floors. And this is all from the CBs, I guess. It had all this built when we got there. Okay. So we had the uh, had our cots. We had our sea bags, and uh, I think there was like twelve of us in each cot or in each uh, in each uh, accommodation. Accommodations, yeah. Did you have sandbags or anything around the uh, around the tent? No, no. No. Did you have any? Uh, enemy fire in your base camp? Uh, well, when we landed is when we got the enemy fire because we got up to our base camps. Okay. Okay, and then the Viet Cong the air base is where all the fuel was, and we were above them, and that night they blew up the uh, the fuel, the fuel yeah, and they put us all on the ground and said, get your asses out there, your magazines are full. He said, they're going to come up the hill after us, that's what. Well, what, wasn't, there, <coughs> what, wasn't there anybody uh, assigned to protect the fuel supply? Yeah, but that was the uh, Air Force Army. Did, did you ever find out how the how the VC got past the security to destroy the? Uh, no, because once once it got blown up and they threw us out in the in the damn jungle on our with our M14s and said so they, they come up, start shooting, so we were all ready to go. So did you have periods of time where you were out in the jungle for more than a day? No. No, even when we had the six by trucks going from one camp to the the other, yeah. You know, uh. So, what what are some of the things that you did while you were over in Vietnam? Uh, I I know that you were what they call a tunnel rat. Yeah. When did you get that assignment? That was way after. Yeah, that's hell. That was after, after we got out of base, base camp and everything. We were just going in. They, they'd get, put us in the six buys, go to a certain area, and they would call my name, Woods. I was five foot six. I'm six foot ten like you are. <laughs> did, did you volunteer to be a tunnel rat? Yeah. Um, yep. Well, I would say yes, but no. I was scared. Okay. But I, I still wanted to do what I was supposed to do. Because of your size, did they feel that you would be uh, there was no a doubt better about, person? There was, huh? Did they feel you'd be a better person to go down into the tunnels? As far as being able to get in there. How far would you go in the tunnels? Well, there was caverns, and we pull our pins. See one come up, and then he did come up. Well, would you, when I say come up, they would come up to here. I've heard that uh, the the tunnel system that they had over there in, in Vietnam was almost like a city in some it, it, caverns. Oh yeah, yep. And they had uh, hospitals, <coughs> and mess areas. Yep. yep. Uh, did you actually get as far as some of those facilities to see them for yourself? No. Now when they sent me and about three or four other guys my size. It's, they put us in, and if there was a explosion or if I pulled a pin or a grenade, then we'd all get get the hell out, because they'd be pulled me up by the arm and just some of the other guys. Well, when you went in there, yeah. uh, were you on your hands and knees? Most of the time, yes. Did you have any rope or anything attached to you so they could pull you out if you had a problem? No. No, I didn't, no. He didn't even have a rope. So you're going in there head first? Yep. No, we're no feet first, actually. You went in feet first? Yes, sir. Yep. 
when you went in there, how did you know whether there were any enemy in there? We didn't. Did you have any arms? Were you armed at all? Forty-five. Is that all? K-bar. K-bar is a knife that's serrated. Stick it in, pull it and pull it back out. How many tunnels or caverns did you go in when you were in there? Oh, nothing. Are we talking dozens or hundreds? No, dozens. Dozens? Yeah. Yeah. Did you ever meet any enemy when you went in one? Only one time that I seen his head poke up. It was one time what? He, his, he came up out of the water. And what happened? I shot him. Was this down in the cave? Mm-hmm. Was he the only one, the only enemy person there? Once I shot him, I got out. We also carried four grenades on us, too. Carried what? Four grenades each. Four grenades? Yep. Well, you couldn't use those very well unless you were close to the exit. Yep. So did you use those on occasion? Every once in a while, but that's when only when I was trying to get the hell out of there. Other than the fellow that came up out of the water that you had to shoot, did you have any other close calls? That was about it. All right. Before you became a tunnel rat, yeah. what kind of things did you do? Were you out in the jungle on patrol? Yeah, most of us were. You know, six spies, they'd take us, take us into a, an area, then we'd get out, and a whole squad, like 12 guys, who would sweep. Uh, when you say a six by, you're talking about a truck. Yeah. And how far into the jungle would you go in oh. the six by? Oh, I can't Are we talking remember. miles or yards? Uh, miles. Yeah, because th the area, you didn't know where the hell they were. Did your squad always have a radio man? Uh, they had a radio man, and uh, we had a, a Vietnamese. Uh, how do you want to call it? Interpreter? Yeah. Do you have a medic? Yes, we did. You have a corpsman. When, when, when they would take you out on these missions, uh, how did you get back? They took you out in the truck and you spread out. And how did you get out. back? I, I assumed that they had probably a, a checkpoint. Okay. So uh, but I didn't really realize back then what the hell to do anyway. Well, when you when you came back to base, did you ever come back in a helicopter? Or was always in a six by. Mostly, it was in a six by. You now the only time it was we were in a helicopter is when they 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 swept swept the rice pot patties, so they would jump off about ten foot off of the out of the chopper. Okay. And then be up to that much in the waist up in the rice patties. And then, did you get out of the rice paddy? Not right away, no. But you did get out? Yeah, oh yeah. Uh, when you landed in the rice paddy, did you ever take any enemy fire? And yeah, I'm sure we did, but I just ducked, ducked down into the water. You want to stick your head up there. Sure. Now, what, when you went in, when you went into this uh, situation, what kind of, uh, uh, outfit were you wearing? Did you have a, a steel helmet? Yeah, we had our helmets, steel helmets. Did you have any body protection? Uh, no, we just had our... Uh, oh, yeah, we had flak jackets. I'm okay. sorry. Yeah, but I mean, our fatigues is what we wore all the time. So you had your helmet and a flak jacket? Yep, and, and a 45. And that's all you had was a 45? No, and then a K-bar. Did you? When you when you went out on any of these forays, <coughs> did you run into any enemy that you traded fire with? Uh, yeah, I've had yeah rounds going over my head. Yes, um, I was on the ground. Yes, I just don't like to think about it. Well, I I, I don't want to br bring up a, an emotional subject, but how long was Frank with you before he was killed? Not very long. Talking weeks or months? No, months. He got killed. Whew. Was he in your squad when he was killed? No. No, they they had 
times that they'd like to separate friends. Okay. You don't want to be a friend. All right. So did you make any friends in your squad? Just the close ones. Just so got my back. Do you, do you know how Frank uh, suffered his uh, fatality? Uh, yeah, it was a grenade. Or, or not a grenade. A rocket? No. Mine? It was a landmine. Yep. Landmine? Yep. Yep, because they shipped him back. Where, where were you when you learned that uh, Frank had been killed? I was, uh... Were you, were you at base camp or were you out on patrol? No, actually... Was Frank the same rank as you? Yeah, yeah. I was sergeant. Uh, I show that your highest rank was the E5 sergeant? Yeah. Uh, did you get that promotion while you were over in Vietnam? Yes. And was uh, Frank an E5 sergeant? Or did no, he not live long enough? No, he didn't live long enough. He was a lance, I don't know if he was a lance corporal or corporal. When when uh, when you went in, uh, this uh, note says that you were in the first division going in. First Marine division. And third division coming out. Yeah. It says here your service date was eight twenty four sixty four to eight twenty six sixty seven. Yeah. Eight twenty four is my birthday, so you went in there on my birthday. Yeah. Uh, but uh, I'm just a little older than you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank goodness you're still here with us. Uh, I appreciate that. Once you became a tunnel rat, did you stay in that position all the time? No, no, I didn't, I didn't want to get... What else did you do? Huh? What else did you do? Go out on patrols? Patrols and that's it. Yeah. yeah I didn't want to go in that water anymore. Um, so we what they call Benjo ditches. That's where all the crap and the that was taught. You call it what a Benjo? Benjo ditch. Ditch. And I guess Benjo is a Vietnamese. Okay. Yeah. Um, when you were, I've heard, and I don't know if this was true in your in your base camp, but I've had some fellows from Vietnam tell me that they might have a cook. Yeah. Or a barber taking care of him in the daytime and then trying to kill him at night. Did you ever experience that? No, no. Mm -mm. Uh, what kind of perimeter protection did you have around your camp? Other than the uh, Air Force, with the, uh, the fuel dumps were. And then when we were out in the jungle, you see our, our trucks and our six by it. Did you ever set up uh, perimeters around you? Oh, camp? yeah. And how did you do that? Usually you had about three to four men on each east, west, or south. Okay. And did you have any wire or uh, fencing or anything? Yeah, we had concertina wire. All right. And was that carried on the uh, six by? Yeah. And then they were stretched out. And you had to do that? Your, your squad yeah, had to yeah, do that? Yeah, you had, yeah. You had that to do it with. And would you be there overnight? No, no, we... Yeah, yeah, we would be there overnight because when they tried to come over the Constantino wire, that's where we would shoot them and that's where they laid. Right. Gooks. BC. So, did you have situations where you were 
out in the out in the field, mm -hmm. and you're set up. Yeah. And who tried to attack you? Were the VC or were they the North Koreans Army or who? No, was it? it was it was the VC. We didn't have any really. Uh, we said North Koreans. We had North Vietnamese. That's what I meant. I yeah. don't know why I said North Korean, no. North Vietnamese. No, My head's not on screen <laughs> either. Yeah. So, what was, how were the, uh, how were the enemy dressed differently, the VC and the North Vietnamese? Yeah, uh, basically the, the VC, they were all black pajamas and the straw, whatever the pointed hats they were. Okay. I've got a picture of one of them in there somewhere. And does the uh, North Vietnamese they had uniforms? Oh yeah, they could tell the difference, yeah. But those, the North Vietnamese really didn't mess with us per se. I mean, uh, how, how do I want to say this too? The, the, North, the North Vietnamese really in your area, it was mostly VC. VC, yes, that's what I was trying to say. Um, yeah, your North Vietnam is the demilitarized zone, and the only time they got involved was when they come down and bomb you. Um, when when the uh, VC would try to attack at night and trying to get over the concertina wire. Yeah. Uh, did you yourself ever have occasion to shoot any of them? Uh, <laughs> eyes closed, I guess I did, because they shot flares up in, in the air. Who did? They did or you did? We did, so we could see them. Okay. And after the, after the shooting was over, did you ever go to see what kind of weapons they were using? Yeah, well, they were using the... Uh, it was a... Were they using Russian weapons? Yeah, that's what I was, I was trying to say. Yeah, they, it was nothing American, like M14 or you know, yeah, something like that. They yeah, had all, all Russian Ru yeah. arms. Yeah, you know, I never really even, I think I probably seen one or two. That's about it. Okay. Yeah. Now, when you, <clears throat> when, when you were sent out, what kind of provisions did you have for, for food? Sea rations. No, somebody's told me that some MI, of those rations were from back in World War II. Oh, they were. <laughs> yeah, the, the green cans, and you had the little opener. Uh -huh. That was uh, chicken. What kind of chicken was it? It was like a... And it was 20 years old? Yeah. Yeah. How did it taste? Like shit. <laughs> This is what it is. And I, and I think there were cigarettes in there too. Yep, those were lucky strikes. Did you smoke? Yes, I did. Uh, was uh, it were you always lucky strike or did they have different brands? Uh, it all depends on if it was rolled or smoked. Okay. This is what it is. How about, it, how about uh, back in camp? Uh, yeah. Did, did you have any alcohol? Did you have any beer or whiskey? Uh, yeah, we had warm beer uh, that they would bring in. Especially on the, at Itchin Chu Live when we were on the uh, South China Sea, they had our foxholes there. Yeah, you know, they would uh, have a truck, which of course I'm sure was protected. And, uh, yep, it was Coors, Coors beer. Coors? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Well, it was a California beer. All right. Uh, it was never a Coors Light or anything like that back then. You didn't have light beer back then? No. Uh, Wiedemann, I think they shipped that over to us. Uh, some nasty stuff from uh, Okinawa. Can't remember the name of that either. Well, how much, uh, how much of these sea rashes did you have at any one time? Would they give you enough for two or three days? Or? Yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. And then they had uh, a can with little nasty biscuits in it. It wasn't, wasn't very good food. <laughs> So how was the food back at camp? Good. It was a big, uh, there was a guy uh, that did all the cooking to cook, and uh, they had a GP tent, and they had uh, the big... Was the, what was the GP tent? General, how do they call it? Uh, general provisions? Ger, perp, I think general purpose use. Okay. Something like that. 
All right. Yeah, I, I, there's one of those cans back. Where's that big gray thing? There's a big, we got one of those things. It's here. Oh, um, yeah, the ammo bag thing? No. Where you can cook for a bunch of people. We got one of them here. Oh. Oh, the stock pot. Huh? A big stock pot. A big pot? pot? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's what they used over there. So what, what would you do during the day uh, when you're not being sent out into the field, or were you sent out into the field every day? Not every day. Uh, when you're not out in the field, what yep. were you doing at camp? Usually smoking regular cigarettes and a few other types. A few other types? <laughs> yeah. You have a little uh, marijuana? Uh, yeah. And sure. not only marijuana, but something else. Tie stick. Huh? Tie stick. I can't hear. Tie stick. Oh, yeah, tie stick from Thailand. They would fly it in from Chopper. What is a tie stick? It's so, Thailand. Yeah. It's a very potent smoke. Okay. Uh, yeah, they would drop off a bale of that stuff and then get all the papers and start rolling. Get a little high, but. Uh, uh, the, the next day, were you okay? Oh, well, yeah, I headache. <laughs> well, okay. Um, when you were out in the field, yeah. did you ever use any of that stuff? Of course. Pardon? Of course you had to. Didn't know if you were going to be there the next five minutes or not. You know, every, everybody smoked over there. But you had to stay alert. Huh? Didn't you have to stay alert? Well, we were supposed to, but... Well, when you're when you're out out in the out in the jungle, yep, and you've got your concertina wire strung, yep, and you've got a position north, south, east, and west, yep. How many hours did those guys have to stay there, and were they relieved after a period of time? Uh, to be true for you, I can't remember that. Uh, usually, it was overnight. I mean, you know, if you were on the night shift and during the day, I mean, didn't have to worry about it. Did you do that uh, some yourself at yeah. night? Yeah. Yep. Did you ever have a problem uh, when you were on guard at night? No. When you say problem, you mean about smoking? No. I, oh. mean, about, I mean about VC. Oh. <laughs> you're, uh, uh, you're out there, you're, you're guarding your position. And yeah. Did they ever... <coughs> you know, when they would shoot the flares up and if we thought we seen something, we just start yeah. shooting. Yeah. Yep. Hit the magazine, put the selector on, pull the trigger. And, and if you get them, you get them. If you don't, you don't. And you said uh, how many rounds were in the magazine? 20. 20? Yes, sir. And how many magazines were you supplied with? Uh, usually four, but if you could get, you, if yeah. you can get one off of a, a body, you take it. Okay. Sorry, but that's the way it was. When you were out on patrol, did you lose some men? Yes. Um, yeah, we had to drag them, drag them back in the bush. I was going to say that you had a, you had a saying of no man was left behind. Exactly. Yep. And uh, drag them back in the bush, and then when things cleared up, you picked them up, put them in the truck. Did you? Okay, they, they were taken back by truck? Yeah. Uh, did you have any medevacs come in and take any of the fellows out? Or oh, yeah, the you talking about the choppers? Yeah. Oh yeah, hell yeah, there was all kinds of them. They were hanging out the side doors and everything, just getting the, getting the hell out of there. Did you ever see a, a chopper get uh, knocked down. down from ground fire? Yep. Yep, and it set fire, and you heard them screaming. And there was nothing you could do for them, was there? Nope. Um, <sighs> so you, you were over there for the best part of three years? Yeah, I think it was. I can't remember. 
Um, they would take us back to Okinawa for R and R, but then you had to go back over again. Oh, you did. Hell yeah. Uh, how would you get to Okinawa? By a plane or a ship? Plane. Was that a, a, a commercial or, or a? Yeah, I think it was. But I think we landed in Naha. And how long would they give you for R and R? <laughs> Three days, maybe. Now in Okinawa, this is. Uh, Yep. This is 20 years after uh, we had defeated Japan on that island. How did the, did you have any interaction with any of the natives on Okinawa? No, basically all we did in Okinawa was refuel. Uh -huh. Yeah, the only... Well, you were there for three days. What did you do during those R&R uh, &R visits? Went to the bars. Got drunk. Uh -huh. And uh, how, about how many times during your stint over in Vietnam, how many times did you get an R&R &R to Okinawa? Maybe twice. Okay. It was very, very... Like once a year or every six months or yeah, what? I think twice, so about, about every six months. Okay. Did you go any place besides Okinawa for R&R? &R? No. R and R was a thing for the army and the navy. <laughs> I guess you know I'm a once a marine, always a marine. Uh, I, know. I, I know. But no squid. That's the navy. But no fly boy. That's the air force. Well, did you get to know any of the uh, squids when you were over there that uh, became friends? Yeah. No. Oh, yeah. Well, because of the the navy. I guess it was our... Well, I, your lifeline for supplies and all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And how about the Flyboys? Uh, those were the helicopter fellas? No, those are mostly just uh, uh, the Air Force flying in uh, provisions and stuff like that. Okay. Yeah. Did you have any situations where you had to call in uh, any uh, air support when you were out in the jungle? No, oh, yeah. Give me a couple of situations where that well, happened. Helicopters with rockets on them, and they knew where we were, so they wouldn't hit us. Sure. Uh, well, what was the situation that required that? Uh, did, you, did you call in the helicopters? The, the air support? Yeah. Yeah, because normally when they knew they had a swarm of them, see, that's, that's where I get confused. Uh, because now I got my head back into the base camp, and I know that's not what we're talking about now. Well, we're talking about being out in the jungle and yeah. you having a situation where the helicopter is called in, one or more. Well, most of, the, most of them were called in to pick the wounded out. Okay. And uh, But you did have some... The helicopter gunships. Oh yeah, you had the gunships, yeah. But then you had to get the wounded out, but then you had to bring dead ones out there. Sure. But did you have situations where you were getting so overrun that you had to have the gunships come in to yep. to uh, yep. you just save your butt? They had your our radio men. Yeah. They, How they, often did that happen to you, Buck? Uh, Couple times, but not very often, though. All right. Um, I'm trying to get all the stuff back in my head again, but well, that's all right. It's a long time. Yeah. <laughs> um, the the helicopter gunships. Uh, they had machine guns. Uh, they have rockets. They had, also. They had rockets underneath. Yes. And then the uh, M60s. You had your gunners strapped in so you wouldn't fall out. Yeah, they were on the side door, weren't they? Yeah, they were on the side door and you just sprayed. And I mean, if it hit, hit civilians, I mean, you know, these, not the Viet Cong, but if there were some Vietnamese that got it, that's the way it was. Yeah. I'm sorry. Um, I, 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 war, war is horrible, I'll tell you that. Yeah. I'm, I'm not a veteran, but uh, I've talked to enough of you fellas that uh, 
sure can appreciate it. Um, before we started the interview, we, uh, we talked a little bit about Agent Orange. Now, you currently have lung problems that, that's attributed to Agent Orange. 100% disability. Now, when were you first exposed to Agent Orange? You mean over there? Yes. <clears throat> or were you exposed in Okinawa because they handled oh, all that? Oh, no. No, I didn't know the Navy handled all that. Okay. No, the only time <laughs> Agent Orange got us was when they sprayed it on us, shot us. So they, what, they, they, they had uh, insecticide too, VC did. So now there, there, were, <clears throat> there were different kinds of Agent Orange, weren't there? Uh, I'll be true with you, I don't know. Okay. I mean, it, it inhales, that's from the lungs. Did you the spray, ever, yeah, the spray they, that you were breathing. Did they, did they ever give you advance warning that they were going to be spraying Agent Orange? I don't remember that. I mean, I, all I know is that I, I seen the chopper spraying. Did you have any... So I'm sure they did. Did you have any kind of masks or uh, breathing protection? I'm trying to remember if we had the, what do you want to call it, the, had the things on the ink. But, but a lot of those were old World War II stuff. Like a gas mask? Yeah, a gas mask. Yeah. That was uh, World War II and... Uh, but you didn't have one? Not, no. 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 Oh. And all the stuff we got, the Marine Corps, didn't always get what the Army got. Did you suffer any immediate after effects when you had to breathe this Agent Orange? It would burn your throat. <clears> There's <throat> a mist, or a, what do you want to call it, a mist? Okay. It's spray, yeah. yeah. And <clears throat> how long did it take before the Agent Orange had an effect on the foliage that it was spraying on? It really didn't take that that much time because after they sprayed, I mean, in the heat over there, it basically just killed all of the foliage. I mean, it was 100 and some degrees over there. They sprayed that stuff, and then they find us. Did that help you guys on the ground uh, as, as far as uh, the enemy was concerned? Could you could you see them better? Was it did it destroy the foliage enough that you had an advantage? Yeah. Yeah. Because, I mean, you know, you had their, they had their tunnels, but once they sprayed that Agent Orange, I mean, that killed everything. Unfortunately, a lot of you guys. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> tell me a little bit about these night patrols. Uh, as far as going into the jungle, uh, and, and Frank was killed by a landmine. What what precautions did you take when you were going out into the jungle? Well, usually you had. <laughs> you have a point man. He had a point man and had his bayonet, and he would stick it in the dirt. And you know, he felt the metal, and they would curl up around it. All right. And that somehow I didn't know, but somehow they. Took the, uh, Somehow they disarmed it? Disarmed it, yes. Now, they had guys that had, I mean, they were pretty well protected, but... But now, you just got a squad of about 12 guys. Yeah. And did one of those guys have any expertise in disarming? I'm um, sure they did, and Frank wasn't one of them. Were you staying on paths, or were you staying off the paths so that you wouldn't uh, be subject to mines that were along the path? Well, no, because we had mines, what we called mine sweepers. Okay. I mean, they had a, a thing that they could detect it. And then that's when they would go ahead and take the bayonets and start digging. And then they had the expertise of this farmer. How about uh, traps in the ground where they might have bungee sticks? Did you ever come across any of those? I, no, sir, I didn't. Because basically all that was a big asshole with bamboo sticks with the urine on it or it's something that's going to kill you. Uh-huh. You didn't, you didn't come across it? No, sir, I didn't. 
But they did they warn you about that? Oh yeah, yeah. What else did they warn you about as far as uh, trying to take care of yourself safely? Your rifle, your forty-five, bayonet, or your K-bar. Did you ever have to use your K-bar? Who me? Yeah. No. no, I didn't get that close. If I did, he was already dying and okay. put him out of his misery. I mean, that's what you did over there. Well, t tell me about the, the size of the DC. Were they short fellas? Uh, definitely shorter than I am. There, there were some tall ones, though. How about the age? Were there any real young ones? Uh, yeah, fellas? yeah, they, they're definitely young ones. And then uh, you got the old people. As part of your squad, did you ever go into a village? Uh, uh, Set it on fire? No, just go in. Searching for any enemy within the village? You, you could, but they, they had Marines that basically knew what the hell they were doing go into the huts okay. where, the, where the VC were, the children, women. But you didn't have to do that? No, I didn't do it. Back at camp, did you talk to fellows that did go into some of these villages and uh, run, run across young kids or women that uh, were, were in, in fact enemy? No, I... Did you get any injuries while you were over there? Who, eh? Yeah. Hearing. And what, uh, was, what was that from? <laughs> Grenades, whatever, whatever. Y'all can't hear. Right now, my hearing aids, and I don't have, I can hardly hear you. All right. Were you ever in, uh, in a camp, maybe not your main base camp, but in a camp where you were subjected to any mortar or rocket fire? You mean say a camp, what do you mean by that? Uh, uh, not, not at your main camp, but in another camp. Well, yeah. You have rocket fire or mortar fire? No, you wouldn't have rocket or mortar fire, you would just have your rifle and your... Uh, did, uh, did the VC had machine guns other than their... They had the Russian, yeah, the Uzis. Uzi? Yeah. What... Um, do you have any good memories? of being in Vietnam, whether it was people you met or men you fought with, uh, any good memories? No. Um, other than your, your good buddy Frank, did you lose any other fellows that were that close to you? I'm sure I did, but it's a long time ago. On, on any one action where you were out in the field, out in the jungle, with your 12-man squad, All right. uh, what's the largest number of casualties of that squad that you had on any one occasion? Probably no more than maybe three or four. Okay. But not all of them. No. Right. Um, so, what Promotions did you get while you were over there in Vietnam? Promotions. 
promotion. Oh, promotion? Yes. Uh, well, the highest I went was sergeant. Uh, Frank was a lance corporal when he got killed. He got a, a, a big word, how would you want to say it? When he, he was a promoted to Tom's, for how do you say it? Uh, when you're dead. A huh? post mortem yeah, promotion? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because he. He was made a Lance Corporal after he. <coughs> Do you know if he was out on a patrol when, uh, when, he, was, when he was killed by the mine? Yeah. Now, he, he was only 18 when he died, right? Uh, I believe so. Yes. Uh, yeah. Killed in action on June the 24th, 1965. Mm -hmm. uh, this is kind of a small picture, and I don't know if you can show this picture of Frank. Can you see that? All right. I should have some in there. Huh? He's a good-looking guy. Yeah, he's a... Uh, Freckles, he was a redhead. <laughs> Didn't yeah. have a whole lot of hair. <laughs> huh? Well, no, none of us did. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he was a fiery redhead. He was, he'd like to fight in a minute. Well, we've got another picture here of you in your uniform. That's your dress uniform? Yes, sir. That's the one that the Marine Corps provided for me when I brought Frank back. Can you see that okay? And where was that taken? Is that at home? That is at my parents' house. In, in Dayton, Kentucky? Dayton, Kentucky, 2nd Street. How old were you there? 18, I believe. Yep. There you had to be 18. Now, when you, when you brought, why did you bring Frank back? Because his parents requested it. He could have been sent home anywhere. But you have the right. You had to repair. Right right. After you brought Frank home, yep. you had to go back? Yes, sir. How long were you home? Uh, I want to say maybe four days, three, four days. Did you have a girlfriend at that time? No, I was married. You were, when did you get married? Uh, see, Paula, hell, I can't even remember that anymore. I got it all in there. You got married the day before you shipped out. Yeah. <laughs> you got married before you went to Vietnam. That's right. I guess she wanted to make sure she could get a, an allotment or something. <laughs> I don't know. It's about uh, the only funny thing. <laughs> yeah, she's done a few pictures there. And that was Paula? Paula, yep. Um, That's my favorite saying, it is what it is. Now I've, I've got here that your marriage date was on June the 26th of 1982. That was us. What? Really? That was our, our, uh, our marriage. marriage. Right? Okay. Yeah. Uh, so, what, what happened to Paula? Did you get a divorce or did you uh, pass away? Yeah, I guess I messed up. I guess you might want to say. Did you have post-traumatic stress disorder when you came back from Vietnam? I'm sure I did. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. They had two children. I, I had episodes. They had two children also. What? You and Paula had two children. You, you and Paula had a couple of children? Yeah. Yep. And, uh, Chris and Jeff. Chris was born November 23 in 1968. Yeah. And then Jeff was born October the 6th of 1969. Yep, I think. Is Chris still living? Yes, both of them are. Where does Chris live? Chris lives over in Latonia, I think. No, he lives in Florence. In Florence? Yeah. Does he have children? 
No, no, he never married. Okay. Do you see Chris very often? Not very often. No. What What does Chris do for for a living? Right now, nothing. Not on plane. I'm sorry to say. Uh, did he go to school? Did he go to high school? Oh yeah. Did he go to college? Uh, no. Uh, what What did he do after high school? Did he have a, a job? Uh, Barb, where are you at? Huh? Yeah, she could probably tell you more about Chris than I can. You worked in Harrison? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. How about uh, how about Jeff? He's, he's still with us? Yes. Uh, where does Jeff live? Jeff lives over in Florence also, right? No? Taylor Mill. Well, Latona. Yeah. And what does Jeff do? He usually he he bounces from car to car. Uh, car salesman? Yeah. Okay. Uh, is he married? Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's got, uh, now you guys got to help me, two, three. Three kids. Okay, do you see Jeff much? Uh, not anymore. And then, then we have three great-grandchildren, too. Yeah, I got three great-grandchildren, too. Three great-grandchildren? Yes, sir. Well, how about that? Good. <laughs> do you see them very often? Yeah, the great kids. Yeah, the, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Good. Yeah, they're, they're balls of fire. <laughs> yes, they are. <laughs> All of them, ain't they? Mm -hmm. Well, that, that's why God gave young people children uh, instead of giving them to old people like you and me. Yeah. So now you, you've got a <clears throat> you've got uh, a son, Brandon. Yes. And Brandon is with us. He was born November twenty fourth, nineteen eighty two. Yes, sir. And he's still here somewhere. And over there. <laughs> He's over there. And his mom's name is? Barb. <laughs> now this I'm getting it. too much information now and they're all here. Okay, so uh, Barb's, Barb's his, his, his mom. And, yep. Uh, you and Barb got married uh, June the 26th of 82? Yes. And, right. And, and then you have a daughter. Mm -hmm. And she's helping us with the, with the camera. Lovely that's, lady right there. That's Jessica. Mm -hmm. And uh, she was born January 13th, yep. 1984. Mm -hmm. Is that when Friday the 13th was? It was. It was Friday the 13th. I'm, I'm thinking that maybe my sister was born on January the 13th, but uh, substantially before that. Um, let's see, uh, going back, going back to grade school, you went to Lincoln Elementary? Yes, sir. And then you graduated from Dayton High. Yes, sir. How many, how many kids were in your graduating class? <laughs> I got a picture of them in there. I think there was... 40 or 50? At least, maybe not that much. She's got a picture in there. No. Which one you are? Yes, I am. Right there. A good looking guy there. <laughs> Can you see that, Jess? Mm -hmm. Edgar Woods. Okay. You know what? Junior. You, you were a, a good looking guy. Yeah, I have my, what they call it, promenade or brokering. I wonder, uh, you wonder, uh, Paula wanted to latch on to you. <laughs> oh, you listen to this, Mother? <laughs> so, so, um, um, we all have a life. When, when did you find out that you were going to be coming home from Vietnam? I guess when my time was up. Uh, well, you were in there three years. Yeah. You? After two years? No, 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 because after I got back, 
I went to uh, North Carolina. And when last you, duty station. When did you come back from Vietnam? How long were you actually in Vietnam? A year or two years? Uh, two years, I think. Wasn't it? You got all that information? No. You don't have that? No, I don't remember that. I don't have that. No, I was only in the Marine Corps three years. Yeah. I but, thought you said you served 13 months. Yeah. In Vietnam. Yeah. Yeah, 13, 13 months? Yeah. yeah. Why the 13 months? I don't know, but that's what it was. And then you came back to the States. Yeah. How did you get back? Boat or plane? Plane. Uh, commercial or military? Uh, commercial. Remember what airline it was? Mammoth, I believe. And where did you where did you come to in the states at first? Well, I guess it'd be north or the. Did you land in in California or did you go straight to North Carolina? No, I went straight to North. I think I went straight to North Carolina. I don't know. Uh, it's, it's one of the memory things. Why did you go to North Carolina? That was a Marine Corps base too. Or no? That's where you went to Lejeune. Yeah, that was Lejeune. Yeah. Camp, Camp Lejeune. Lejeune, North Carolina. Yeah. And what did you do at Camp Lejeune? Were you an instructor or a trainer? No, no. no I was married then because we lived at the uh, Geiger, uh, what do you call it? Trailer Yeah, so that was Camp Lejeune. But then they had a uh, place for the military uh, so they had living accommodations for the military yeah like trailers I'm sorry trailer park trailer park right. and that was called uh, it, it's got problems too with the water okay I've, I've read about that yeah and uh, so you lived there with with Paula. Paula, yeah. Um, I think that's when. Is that when Chris was born, or yeah, that's where Chris was born. Well, Chris was born in '68. You had a couple yeah. of miscarriages down there. Yeah, she had a couple of miscarriages out. Okay. From that water stuff. All right. Uh, what did what did she do while you were at uh, Camp Lejeune? Did she have a job uh, off base? No, off base? no. No, she just took care of Chris and Jeff. Was, was she the same age as you, or was she younger or older? Uh, no, she was younger. Uh, How much younger? A year, two years? But two years, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, she was 17. She was 17 or I can't believe I had all this stuff in my head. Well, it's, it's a lot. It's a lot to have. Yeah. Um, So when you got back to the States, Camp Lejeune, did you stay there until you were discharged? Drum, drummed out of the Corps? Yeah. All right. You had an honorable discharge. Yes, sir. And where did you go when you left Camp Lejeune? Uh, came back up, I guess, to Kentucky, didn't we? Come back up yeah. to Cincinnati? Yeah. How'd you get to Cincinnati? Bus? Train? Nope. Plane? Car. Car? Yep. Uh, whose car did you drive? Or did you drive? Yeah, I drove then. Did you have a car down at Camp Lejeune? Yeah, it was an old Chevrolet, I think. Whew. So you, 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 drove, you drove home? Yeah. Did your parents know you were coming home? Yeah, I'm sure they did. I'm sure I called them. You called them? Yeah. And who saw you first when you got home? Mom or dad? I'm sure mom. You remember her reaction? She cried. <laughs> dad, dad didn't cry for nothing. Uh -huh. He was an old fart. Were any of your uh, brothers and sisters at home when you uh, arrived back from Camp Lejeune? Mm. Have a greeting party or anything? I don't think they did. 
So what what did you do? Did you uh, get a job right away, or did you kind of uh, try to get yourself together from being in Vietnam? I think I got a job with Interchemical. That was on out there in Florence. What's that main drag there? In Florence? Yeah. What did what did they do? It was an ink. It was an ink company. For, for printing companies? Yeah, Interchemical. Yeah. Uh, what, what did you do for that company? No, I was a clerk. How long did you work there? Mm. I'm going to say maybe a year. Maybe. Um, being a, being a, a veteran, uh, did they give you any special treatment over any other employee they had? No. Uh, did you get an easier time getting a job as a veteran? Back then, no. Okay. So when, when you left that company, where did you go? Okay, Interchemical. That's not when I worked for that Uncle it. Bill, was it? It would have been Speedy's dad. Did he work for your dad? Yeah. Did you? Did you? Yeah. Yeah, I worked for, uh, he got me a job, uh, Paper? printing, wasn't it? Wasn't your dad a uh, worked for a printing company, Intercom, or? It may have been his uh, brother-in-law. Okay. Maybe his brother-in-law. Brother-in-law? My, my dad's brother-in-law. I thought I had worked for Uncle Bill, too. What'd you do for Uncle Bill? Ink. He was a ink company. So what else did you Didn't your dad have a job at an ink company? Yeah, he was working at Baker and Company. They did parts for garage doors. Okay, and maybe that's what I'm remembering about your dad then. I know I worked for him. Now there was McLan David McClanahan, who was a printer. That's all right. That's a long time ago. Uh, for both of them. I, I know, but I, I thought I worked with your dad, too. Now, the, the fellow that you're talking with right now, what's his name? No, Speedy? Yes. Yeah. yeah. What's his name? Bill. Bill what? Junior. Bill, Bill Hines. Right? Yeah, what's his last name? Hines? Hines, yeah. Okay. <laughs> this was a test. I'm <laughs> sure. And I've had so much stuff going through my head today, I don't know what the hell I'm doing. And they, they <laughs> yeah, Uncle Bill, yeah. And they call him Speedy. Yeah, oh yeah. Right. Yeah, that was Speedy. And I was Bucky. And then yeah. three so, uh, were you and Speedy uh, cousins? Yes, we were. And did you pal around together a lot? I thought we did, yeah. Uh, where did he live when you were in Dayton? Uh, we lived, uh, or he lived, at the corner of... Did you live in Dayton? Yeah. You go to yeah, school together? Didn't, didn't your mom and dad live at... Yeah, we lived about a hundred yards apart. Yeah. Did you go to school together? I don't think we did. Yeah. Did we? Grade school. Grade school? Yeah, grade school, yeah. That's I going back to you far. Huh? I got a kinder, kindergarten picture set of us together. Oh, what's that picture? Of it? You got one? Yeah. Uh, what's what's that? that? Let me show you this. That's my mom and me. Okay, and I'll see if Jessica can see that. That's your mother and you? Yes. She's now five foot four. How tall was your dad? Was your dad uh, taller than you? No. I don't know, I got a picture of dad here somewhere. Dad was about 5'5". Five, five, five. Uh, five, 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 yeah. Mom was 4'11". This, this is a real small picture and I don't know if we can, if we can get, get that on the camera. Yep. And it, okay. And, his dad. No, wait a minute, that's Biden there. That's that's not dad. 
But that's not me. That's Jim Biden. There's a, there's a woman, and beside her is who? That is my uh, oldest brother-in-law, and he was a Marine. That's why I joined the Marine Corps. And the one on the extreme right is who? My dad, with the beer belly. All right, I don't know if Jessica can <coughs> see that. Can you see where it's dad and mom? Mm -hmm. You got that? Mm -hmm. Okay. There's a lot of beer drinkers in our family. Well, you came by that honestly over in uh, Vietnam. Yeah. Uh, where, where did uh, where did you where did you bring your buddy back to? Okay, I brought him back uh, to, to his mom and dad. He he buried up New Richmond. Uh, they flew him in. To Richmond, Ohio? Yes. That's it's right on the river? Yes. Uh, and where, is he buried in New Richmond? Yes, he is. Yep, I got a picture of that. Now, did, did Frank have brothers and sisters? Yeah, he had uh, a sister. I don't think he had a brother. He had cousins. Because there's the Ackersons and the Adamsons. He was an Adamson. Yeah. He was uh, Adamson. Yeah. Frank Adamson. Yes. And he had cousins and the Rackersons, but. So when did you retire from work? Mm. How old were you? Work all together? Yeah. Yeah, Barb, you ought to be able to answer that. I can't remember. Where did I get retired from? Besides working for you. You were working for Lindale. Uh -huh. You were working for Lindale Auto Parts. Lindale Auto Parts over in Ohio. So your birthday is going to be August the 5th, and how old are you going to be? Uh, 76. 76 or 7? 6? You're going to be 76. Yeah. Okay. And uh, so if you're 76 and now, how long have you been retired? You've been retired uh, 10 years, 15 years, 20 mm. years? 20, I guess, ain't it? How long have we been married? 20 years. 20, yeah. 20 years. Do you remember what job you retired from? Did you work in the time? Huh? Lindale Auto, Lindale Auto Parts. Lindale Auto Parts? There was another auto parts place. Lindale Auto Parts. Yeah. Do you know where Lindale was? They were over in Ohio, up off of... Uh, Amelia. Huh? Amelia. Amelia? Amelia, okay. just, which is uh, a little bit east of downtown Cincinnati. Yeah. And what did you do for the auto parts? Uh, inventoried uh, cars that were wrecked, what was good, what wasn't good. Is that before I... Uh, Work for Randy? No, that was after. Huh? That was after. That was after. You Talk up. Carpenter. You were a union carpenter before you worked for Oh, okay. Lindale. Yeah. Okay. So you you were a union carpenter? Yes, sir. And um, so as a union carpenter, did you work for a variety of different contractors? I worked for the, well, yeah, but then they would send you to different Right. Yeah. You'd, you'd sign up in the union hall, yeah. and then they would send you out wherever somebody needed yeah, exactly. a carpenter. Exactly. Yeah. Now, were you a rough carpenter or a finished carpenter? Uh, mostly finish. No, I, I didn't mess with the. I don't want to screw up a house by not. <laughs> did, did you? Uh, uh, how'd you learn to be a finished carpenter? Hello. Uh, Just on the job training. Dad. My dad, yeah, mostly. My dad, yeah. Okay. Uh, he was, uh, how does that go? Uh, jack of all trades. Master. Jack of all trades and master of none. That's what he did. So as a finished carpenter, did, did you work mostly on, on uh, residential? Uh, yeah, the finished carpenter would be your trim, uh, baseboard. Uh, in homes? Yeah, in homes, yes. yes. What two big projects did you work on? 
Yeah, yeah, Paul Brown Stadium. I worked there. Down Paul Brown Stadium. Now that somebody that's going to be watching this year from now, what's Paul Brown Stadium? It's a football stadium in Cincinnati. Yes, sir. For the Cincinnati Bengals. Yes, sir. And <clears throat> what part did you play in building you know, Paul Brown Stadium? Paul Brown Stadium. Well, we had to climb because of the. Uh, stairs and all that other stuff and then we did mostly trim work and all the uh, up where the big shots were and then you had your other rooms so it was all finished carpenter trim you, did you do work in the in the uh the training room and then the uh, the team dressing rooms no well the dressing rooms would be the under coming under the trim work too. okay so then you had another job. Did you work at uh, Kings Island? Where? Kings yeah. Island? Yeah, uh, well, I didn't work there too long because you had to climb with... Uh, yeah, safety harness? Yeah, safety harnesses. And I got to the point where I couldn't... Because when they were building that, basically it was all lumber. Right. And uh, I didn't like heights like that. And what was it you were building? One of the roller coaster? coaster? The big one. Yeah. Uh, was that the first one they had? Uh, I think so. Yeah. Part, the, no. The Son of Beast. Can't hear you. It was the Son of the Beast roller coaster. The kids know because they wrote it. It was the which one? Son of Beast. Southern? Son, Son of S Beast. Oh, Son of Beast. Son of the Beast, Son yeah. Son of the Beast. It was the largest wooden roller coaster built. Yeah. How long did you, uh, d you didn't like heights, so how long did you work? I, pro uh, well, <clears throat> after that they sent me down to, uh, I think I was, they, I mean, they sent me down to do trim work at uh, Paul Brown Stadium then, I guess. You okay. would load the lumber onto uh, tables and then they would lift it up to the guys up on top. And they would install it. So what You're going to have to talk up, sweetie. Well, she's talking about how they lifted the... They lifted the lumber up to you yeah. on the lift? Yeah, well, I was the guy on the bottom. Okay. And then I would uh, have a radio, and then they would send it up on the uh, crane. Okay. And, uh... I was a smart guy. So about... Sure. So about <laughs> how long did you do that? Was that uh, weeks, so weeks or months or years? That would when they finished. How yeah, because I worked in the inside the uh, rooms, too, the, where the... You big were a couple set. years up there at the roller coaster until it was done. Yeah, until it was done, yeah. And they offered them all a ride. They got the first ride on the roller coaster when it was finished. Yeah. And he said no. And I put go. Yeah, they put all the carpenters and let them ride the thing. And I just kind of flipped them off. I ain't going up there. Uh, I don't like roller coasters either. No. You wouldn't have caught me up there. Just shoot me. That's right. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, you know, we've, uh, we've been talking here for a good while this morning. Is there anything uh, that you would like to mention? Anything uh, that stands out in, in your life that you might want somebody to know about you down the road? Any experiences you had, uh, either in Vietnam or in high school or grade school or working? Yeah, you know, pretty well. Went over all that, but uh, I guess Frank and I'm going to guess that the worst thing that happened to you in Vietnam was losing Frank. Yes, it was. Yes, it was. Yeah. Jessica, uh, you you've been uh, helping us out here with looking at the pictures, and is there anything you want to bring out? Not that I can think of. Can't think of anything. Okay. Speedy? Yes, sir. Anything you want to bring out? No, I just want to thank Buck for his service to our country and uh, how much I appreciate it. Thank you. Brandon? He, he, uh, he always tells a story on how him and Frank uh, had to ask their parents for permission oh. to join. Yeah, I forgot all about that. Okay, so we're, we're finding out that uh, you and Frank had to ask your folks for permission to join. Now, that, is that because you were under 18? Yes, both of us. 
and tell me about uh, who did you approach first, your mom or dad, or both? Both. And what was their reaction initially? Dad didn't bother him. Mom said no. And dad didn't care one way or the other. And so, if your mom didn't approve, were you still able to get in? Yeah. Because your dad okayed it. Yep. And how, how about Frank's folks? Did he tell you he had any problems? Uh, no, I don't think Frank had any problems. You had to ask Frank's dad. Oh, I did have to, yeah, Kenny, uh, yeah, his dad. I, I had to ask, ask him, and he thought it was good for him. You asked Frank's Kenny. father? Yeah, Kenny. What, what did, why did you ask Frank's dad? Because Cause you wanted I wanted Frank a friend. To go in with you? That's exactly why we did it. Me and him. At first, Frank's dad wasn't on board with it. He didn't want it to happen. What? At first, Frank's dad wasn't on board. He didn't want yeah, to join. Yeah, he didn't want it. Yeah, but. Well, how long did it take you to convince his dad to let Frank go in with you? Was that a matter of days or weeks? Probably. They lived in that house over that garage. Uh, now, how can I remember stuff like that? Like, where they lived? <laughs> I don't know. But we had to uh, talk to Frank's dad and told Frank's dad that I'll take care of him over there. Yeah. You prom you promised Frank's dad that you would watch after Frank while he was over there. Yeah, I didn't do a very good job though. Well. You, you weren't out on this. You weren't together at the time he got killed, were you? Right. Yeah. So you didn't have much choice in protecting Frank. No. Nope. Frank uh, actually went over a little earlier, a month earlier than Buck did. Um, when when Frank was there, was he basically in July, where you were, all the time? I think so. Okay. Well, um, if you don't have anything else to add, we've looked at photographs. Uh, obviously, you've got an honorable discharge. <clears throat> I show here that you've got a Vietnam campaign medal. Is that right? Yes, sir. And you've got a Vietnam service medal. Yes, sir. And you've got a National Defense Service medal. Yes, sir. And you got a good conduct medal. Yes, sir. Now, behind that it says first award. What's that mean? Is that the first thing you got? Yeah, I guess I, I can't remember. It's just new Frank's car. Uh, now, it says here you got a good conduct medal. Uh, Twice. In, in August for a second award, August yep. of 67. Is that when you were... Uh, Discharged. Uh, in... in uh, South Carolina, in North Carolina? Yeah. What was, what, what was the weather like in Carolina as, as opposed to where you were over in Vietnam? North Carolina was a paradise. Vietnam was a hellhole. Hot. How about, uh, how about rain? Did you have any monsoons over there? Monsoon? Oh yeah. Yep. Sleep in your sleeping bag and Hot, hot damn rain. Uh, when you would get rain, would it rain for days after day? Yep. Would you have to go out on patrol during, on the, in the rain? Yep. How was the chow down at uh, North Carolina? How was the food? Well, southern, I guess. <laughs> when I. You and your you and your wife yeah lived in a trailer yeah and uh, did the did the military supply you with food and she cooked at home or? Uh, no not food just uh, just the, the trailer the accommodation yeah so did you have to meet, eat in the in the mess hall no we have to go out and eat go out on the town yep. and eat yep did you have any kind of a, an allowance for that from the government. I'm sure we did, but I 
came around, she was pregnant with Chris M. Well, let me ask you if you remember, what's the best paying job you ever had when you were a working man? Construction? Yeah. Yeah, because the union paid good. Mm -hmm. The other ones were basically clerk jobs. Yeah. You worked at Van Loon's for a while selling Yeah. Cabinets. Well, that's... Yeah, Van Loon's had the home center. Van Loon's? Yep. Where was that? That was up in uh, Ohio, or up in... Red Bay? No. Uh, in Cincinnati area? Van Lunens. Cincinnati area? Yeah, Van Lunens. W what did you do for them? Uh, order lumber. Inventory? Even, yeah, inventory, <clears throat> lumber. Uh, the stuff Same. had to be... Were you a salesman? Yeah. Yeah, I was a salesman. Did you ever have to go out and uh, appraise jobs? Yep, yep, I did. How'd you like that work? That wasn't bad. I I didn't like going to people's houses. Okay. You know, uh, but I, I could tell them how much trim they needed, uh, drop ceilings, stuff like that. Just figure, go to their home and figure out uh -huh. what the, they needed and how much it was going to cost them. Well, I, I, I pretty well exhausted the questions I wanted to ask you. Let me thank you. Yes, sir. Number I, one, for your I, service. I appreciate it. I really and do. Number one, and number two, thank you for this interview. And I'm sorry I made you have some uh, no, bad it, memories. No, we were. It had to come out. Instead of keeping it in. That's all right. And I've kept it in for quite a, quite a few years. Yeah.